right, here we go. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is, as you know, City Budget 101. And we are so glad that some of you are here and some of you are tuning in to watch this on community television this evening. Uh, I just want, as a, by way of introduction, uh, I just wanted to kind of set the context a little bit. As you know, the city government has kind of, I mean, there's a way you could break it down a lot of different ways, but I see that city government has two primary roles. One is we regulate some things. We have city ordinances, city laws. We regulate through the zoning and planning documents the physical development of the city. But then the other thing we do is we have activities and projects we do. And that's really what we want to talk about tonight. That's what the decisions about the city budget really reflect is what activities and projects will the city be undertaking over the next year. Um, so and in, in making uh, decisions about our budget, in other words, decisions about what activities and projects we're going to uh, undertake, we need the community's help. We need your help and your input. And it's our thought in having this class tonight that you all as community members will be better prepared to offer that input if you have a good understanding of the budget process, um, just what our budget looks like, and sort of the legal environment that the city operates in as it makes budget decisions. So in a more specific way, here's what we're hoping you'll know by the end of our session tonight. Um, first, what the city does um, day in and day out. What it, in other words, what are, what are our responsibilities as a city government? Um, we hope you'll understand that we have a lot of different funds. Uh, in other words, different pots of money. Um, and what the rules are that regulate um, how we use the money within each of those funds. We hope you'll understand at the end of the evening um, the environment we operate in terms of the state, state uh, budget crisis that has impacted our city budget for the last decade on a regular basis. How the, and this also, the, envir the environment that we all think of as the limping economy of the state of California, which affects our budget. And also the state uh, constitution, which sets a lot of parameters about how the city can raise revenue. Um, we can't just, the city council just can't raise taxes. Um, the state, state government, uh, state law really uh, sets the parameters of what kind of revenue we will generate here in the city of Santa Cruz. And lastly, we hope you'll end up knowing what your opportunities are in the weeks ahead to participate in our budget decisions. So with that, I am going to turn the microphone over to our city finance director, Mark Pimentel, and he is going to start in on one of those topics that I mentioned, the, uh, the, those different funds, uh, pots of money that the city has to operate. Thanks, Mark. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm the city of Santa Cruz's new finance director. Uh, just a little over two months here and really enjoying my time here. And I have to say I have a, a, a plug for, for the city of Santa Cruz. Um, this was a no-brain decision to come here because of the organizational structure, because of the uh, commitment that the city, this organization, this council, this community has had to uh, keeping Santa Cruz in, in a very stable um, and functional position and always trying to look proactively at the future and what's coming. And so a little bit that we're going to be talking about that later on in this presentation tonight, that same theme. Um, my job tonight is to turn fund accounting into something interesting, which is a challenge in and of itself. Um, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit in generalities. Uh, as it, City of Santa Cruz, as any city does, um, receives money from different sources. And those sources are often confused of how it can be used within the organization. Um, by and large, as our slide talks about, there's some major, major operations that are funded through the city of Santa Cruz and, and like many other municipalities. Um, the big chunk of it, uh, where a lot of our discussions will revolve around our, our issues revolving our general fund. Typically, you'll, you'll see a general fund only be about half, sometimes less, of your total city operations. For the city of Santa Cruz, it's just a little under half of our total operations. But it's where a lot of our discussion is focused because that's where 
a lot of the ma major community decisions are coming from your public safety de decisions, your parks and recreation, your community outreach decisions. Um, there's a lot of uh, flexibility in those funds to apply those in a way that meets the goals of the community as directed by the city council. Um, so that's where you'll see a lot of our energy focused, but we do have other funds and other major operations going on. Certainly within the city of Santa Cruz, our water fund, wastewater and refuse funds are very active operations. However, those resources coming in typically through uh, fees, um, through your rates, that rate, utility rate, rates uh, users will pay, is restricted for only that purpose. Water funds can only be used for water purposes. You can't take water money and use it for another purpose, uh, fund police officers or anything like that type. Um, same with storm water funds, golf course, special revenue funds, and what we used to call a redevelopment fund, and we'll have a little segment about that. Of course, earlier this uh, calendar year, redevelopment agencies were eliminated throughout the state of California, which has ripple effects, uh, not only on the communities and projects, but also on funding streams going to the future. Um, but in a general sense, our general fund is where most of our major decisions are, are going to be made. And the other funds are critical, important pieces of our operations, but they're really restricted in what you can and how you can use them. Um, because of that, I'm going to talk focused on our general fund from a revenue perspective. So once the resources flow into our general fund, what type of resources would flow in to fund those operations? And if you're looking at this pie chart, you can see there's three major components of that. And if you did a little quick math, it's close to 75% of our general fund resources come from property tax, sales tax, and uh, utility users tax. Um, so those are our major components and those from a financial perspective and from a city council community perspective, those are places where we want to pay particular close attention to the impacts of the economic impacts and what and how they're driving the trend lines and, and where they're going on that. If you have fluctuations in the franchise tax or mission tax or business license taxes, those fluctuations won't be as critical as say a fluctuation of 2% fluctuation of property tax or sales tax or utility users tax. So you'll see a lot of our energy be spent in, in those revenue sources and make sure we really understand what's happening in those and being able to predict the future on those sources. In general, there's a, a, a collection of uh, different taxes that fund our general fund operations. Again, property tax, sales tax, and utility tax are the ba big players in that. Uh, but we have some other folks that participate. Um, revenue from parking lot taxes, uh, hotel bed tax, also kind of called transit occupancy tax. Um, those are pretty good revenue sources for the city. Um, our hotel tax is about 7% of our total budget, so um, that is particularly one that we'll pay additional attention to. Um, emission tax, uh, that can reach about 4% of our budgeted revenue, so that's also one we want to pay particular attention to. Um, but those are kind of the bulk resources of funding flowing into the city and in particular the general fund again that funds our core operations uh, in public safety police fire parks and recreation and many of our other administrative services that we'll talk about a little bit later i wanted to spend a little bit of time just talking about those particular major revenue line items and where they've been and where they're going and uh, if i had a, a pointer you, we can all look into a point in time in 2008 when, the, when this great recession started, and you'll see the impacts of that recession, and it'll have different effects on, depending on the revenue streams. Uh, property tax is typically a lagged revenue where you're, you'll see the real economy impacts be about a year and a half in decline. And in this example, um, in fiscal year 2008, when the recession you know, was on point, hitting some major steam going downwards, we still had some growth in property tax the next year, 2009. There was a little bit of lag in that. And it wasn't until 10 and 11 that you saw some declines. Fortunately for the city of Santa Cruz, the declines here don't really equate to some of the declines that you might have seen throughout the rest of the state and certainly in the Central Valley. Um, so we were fortunate in this community that property values, by and large, um, have held up. And you haven't seen the major devastating declines that you would have seen with the other jurisdictions. Uh, jumping into sales tax, uh, sales tax is a more responsive revenue source. Uh, you can see in 2008 we had a peak revenue and then right away in 2009 as the economy was hitting we saw sales tax hit right away a major decline in 2009 and another decline in 2010 and that's very typical of a sales tax trend you'll see you'll see the impacts of the economy hit that one um, quite a bit faster than than you would see otherwise um, and what this chart is, is showing you is total sales tax over our base sales tax and an add-on sales tax 
And there's often confusion over the eight and a quarter or eight and a half percent sales tax that the city of Santa Cruz uh, consumers will pay. Um, out of that, one and a half percent of that is dedicated to the city of Santa Cruz. Um, the rest of that goes to the other jurisdictions. The biggest chunk of that five and a half percent uh, flows directly to the state for their general fund. So sales tax is a major funding source for the state of California. Um, but just keep in mind, uh, about one and a half percent, one and a half of the points of the eight and a half percent will flow into the city of Santa Cruz. Five and a half goes to the state. And then there's some special carve offs for certainly in this county, the library gets a, a quarter of that. Um, county transportation and the transit district get about three quarters of that. And then there's a public safety allocation to fund public safety services, particularly for the county. Um, that's about a half a percent of that. Um, but just want to talk a little bit about, again, the trends in the fact that we are starting to see some gains going into 2013. Um, we've been relatively flat the last several years, but we're starting to see a couple quarters of positive growth. It's not enough to say we're completely out of this yet, but it certainly is enough to say that there are signs of some strong um, potential for growth next year. I wouldn't say strong growth, but there's strong potential for a growth rate. And we're thinking somewhere in the three to 5% range is probably where we're gonna end up. Uh, I should recap a little bit on property tax. Um, we're still projecting a flat property tax growth rate. Um, you know, we, aren't, we, we are not seeing the, the growth in the assessed values uh, yet in this, in, this, in this county, let alone uh, in our little jurisdiction. Uh, utility users tax. Um, if you were to look at the trend, the trend line over time, you'll see it spike up in, in fiscal year 10 and 11. And a large chunk of that wasn't necessarily anything driven by the economy because in 2008, it, it had its peak at that time, had a little bit of delay for 2009 and a drop in 2000, um, uh, a little bit of a drop in 10, but a big pickup in 2011, and that came out of a, a voter initiative in the city of Santa Cruz to help fund public safety services. So there was Measure H uh, that was passed by the voters in 2010 that went online in calendar 2011 that brought some additional resources into the city to help stabilize the city's resources to avoid um, drastic cuts in, in some of our police and, and other key services in fire and parks and recreation. Uh, transit occupancy tax in this community is certainly a major revenue source that we want to track. It, 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 it's a good indicator of what's happening in the greater economy, um, let alone day trips from the Silicon Valley to uh, vacation trips from throughout the country or the world. Um, we've seen pretty good st stable growth. You know, this is a revenue trend that typically wasn't devastated uh, by the economy. If you roll back the clock to 2001, you would see the 9-11 impact but not necessarily the, the Great Recession impact. didn't have a major hit on this particular line. And a lot of that might have came out of uh, Silicon Valley. The day trips were still coming this way. There might have been a drop off in major travel, but the day trips were still coming to our boardwalk and our other amenities in this area. Um, and it has been a steady growth in the last couple of years. Uh, we're projecting uh, marginal gains uh, next year, but relatively flat. Um, there is some positive indicators there with some potential new properties coming online and we're going to be watching those construction timetables and uh, counting on some new resources um, probably late into this fis next fiscal year and certainly into our out year. Uh, that being said, I'll kind of, Mark, yes? What was in that last slide? What was that uh, audit dollars? Yes, if you're particularly uh, good eyesight or you're at home and, and you're seeing that, uh, there are a couple of years where there's an additional bar on top of that. And what that represents is additional resources. The finance department will routinely uh, conduct audits of its hotel operations. And sometimes those audits are validated, meaning their operations are relatively uh, on check. And there are times when we find there are discrepancies that, that we're due additional money. So what that represents are additional collections as a result of audits initiated by finance department staff. So those are positive gains that uh, were rectified. I'll, I'll repeat that just for all, all of our audience and those at home. Um, but, but we did have some growth in the base in, in 2011 and, and certainly that rolls into 2012 and some new properties that were brought online as well as the city council uh, proactively looking for ways to incentivize uh, development investment in our community. Um, as I said before, this council's done a really nice job of uh, approaching things from outside the box of how can we change the economic status of our community. Uh, it can't all come through uh, traditional measures. We have to grow our way out of this in a certain extent. So um, that is certainly uh, something important to note of 
the increase in, in 2011 and into 2012 came out of this, um, some new developments. Um, other than that, I'll just summarize. There are, there are other revenue sources that will flow into our general fund, um, usage fees, um, user fees. Those, you would typically see those out of your community development and building departments as development happens. Um, uh, there are other sources of funds that we talked about in the beginning of this presentation. Utility funds will have a fee-based system where they'll receive fees that will come in to fund water, wastewater, sewer, um, a refuse, a golf course, and other operations that those funding sources can only be used for that operational purpose. And of course, we're, we're now dealing with the loss of what was redevelopment funding, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later on in this presentation. Um, with that, I think I'll turn over the floor to our city manager. All right, so I'm just going to do a quick overview of, uh, in general, where we, we uh, spend um, our, our money, or the city's money, and then uh, the mayor will go through and more, more uh, specifically outline all the services that we provide in a little bit more detail. So again, just to give you a, a broad overview of uh, our budget, this is the, uh, what's represented here in this large pie is the uh, city's uh, proposed budget for uh, next fiscal year, which is already, uh, if you go to the city's website, you can actually uh, see it. It's uh, it's available as of today, actually. So um, this will be reviewed by the council next week when they hold budget hearings on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, so there's another opportunity to uh, inform yourself about the uh, the budget. In any case, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more a little later on. But this is really the city's overall budget, um, and it's a budget of close to $200 million, $175 million in total expenditures uh, that we're projecting for next year. Um, a big chunk of it is a general fund, as uh, our finance director, Mark Pimentel, explained. Uh, the general fund largely consists of, of uh, our core services uh, that we think of in terms of public safety, police, fire, parks and recreation, um, and there's a contribution there from uh, into the library system as well. So those are uh, the core services provided from from that fund. And road 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 work, street lights, some public works functions that are also critical come out of the general fund. Um, the um, the thing that's uh, uh, again different about the general fund, of course, is that it relies on on taxes and therefore is more reliant on the economy, as a kind of mark reviewed when he looked at all the different uh, revenue sources for the general fund. So it's, it's just, it tends to be a little bit more volatile, if, more volatile. So if the economy is down, then revenues are down, and which is why you hear about deficits in the general fund as opposed to deficits in the other funds. The other funds are more stable because their rate payers pay for them, um, and it's just easier to track uh, and to adjust those rates uh, uh, in, from a long-term perspective. Uh, then it is the general fund because we can't predict recessions and all kinds of other uh, activities that happen outside of our uh, control. Uh, the other, Santa Cruz is a full service city. A lot of cities don't provide uh, utilities like we do. Uh, and so utilities are a big part of our budget, as you can see here. Uh, large uh, part of it is the uh, water uh, enterprise, uh, the refuse enterprise, and the wastewater enterprise. Uh, those are pretty significant waters, about $30 million. That, Wastewater 20 and refuse is another, about 20 as well. Um, so those are our big utilities. Uh, we also are a regional service provider. So uh, we provide water service to a larger service area beyond the city limits, about a population of about 90,000 as opposed to the city's 60,000 uh, population within the city limit. Uh, with respect to wastewater also, we, we, we run a regional wastewater treatment facility uh, that provides services beyond the city limits uh, as well. Uh, and then in the refuse uh, enterprise, we, it's a full service. We, we, we do both the collection, the disposal, the processing, uh, which is also why it's large. In some jurisdictions, the cities maybe don't have a landfill. They pay to have it shipped to somebody else's landfill and so on and so forth. So for that reason, again, because we're full service, we have pretty large funds in this area. Uh, then we've got other uh, services that we operate like uh, uh, an enterprise fund that we don't necessarily have to, but we do uh, because we want to track expenses and we want them to pay for themselves. The most significant one is the golf course enterprise, which uh, you've probably heard has not uh, completely been paying for itself in the last few years. We're working to have that be achieved, and there is a, a gap there, uh, and the council took some action this year to reduce the, the gap, the subsidy there. Uh, it was about half a million dollars, and we're trying to get it down to uh, 
uh, closer to 300,000 and then hopefully to nothing uh, in the near future. Um, but that operates as, a, as, a, as an enterprise and it's about two, 2.1 million is the budget for that. Uh, so that kind of gives you, I think, an, a broad overview of, of really what we do. Um, there's stormwater. Uh, the capital budget is a big part of, of some of the, the capital budget is the, uh, all the infrastructure work that's done. It's uh, all the work to uh, improve uh, and update parks, parks equipment, it's road repairs, it's uh, uh, all the uh, capital projects to replace storm drains and uh, street lights and all that sort of thing. So that's a big part of what we do as well. And then um, this is just a, a more detailed breakdown of the general fund. Uh, as you can see here, public safety, in the general fund, public safety is the biggest chunk of the pie. Uh, between police and fire, that's the majority. And this is something actually that's changed over time. When I first got here in 1997, uh, public safety was less than half of the pie. It was close to 40% and 60% with everything else. Now it's flipped around. Public safety is... Uh, uh, over 60% uh, of the general fund currently, and everything else is, is less than that. So as you can see, the biggest chunks are police, fire, parks and recreation, and public works. And the reason for that is, is we've had to reduce the budget. Uh, clearly, uh, it's been harder to reduce public safety uh, because that's a, a, a pretty core uh, needed service, and we've had to make reductions uh, in other areas, particularly parks and rec has been hit hard. You know, we closed the the, uh, the Harvey West pool, uh, we've reduced maintenance costs, we've uh, had to uh, uh, turn over operations of a museum, of a community center, those sorts of things. So uh, unfortunately, parks and recreation has been disproportionately uh, hit with reductions over the years. Um, we also fund uh, community programs. Uh, it's a small, very small portion of the budget here, uh, relatively 1.25 million, uh, but we do do that. And then the others are the administrative departments, which are fairly small. With respect to the library system, the city does a fixed contribution of 1.4 million, roughly, every year. The rest is funded out of the sales tax measure that uh, Mark Pimentel uh, uh, mentioned. So it largely operates almost like an enterprise fund with some general fund contributions from the city and uh, some property tax from the county and uh, cities of Scotts Valley and Capitola. It's a regional library system. Uh, we operate it, uh, but it serves uh, the uh, county, except for Watsonville. So that's kind of an overview, and I'll turn it over to uh, the mayor, Don Lane, who kind of actually walked through some of the more details of the different programs. Thank you, Martine. Uh, so now, as I was saying a moment ago, this just what I find um, is really important to recognize kind of the scope and and range of services and activities the city budget funds and here's probably the most obvious one our uh, police department and it, uh, con it as, as was noted earlier it's a, almost 40 percent I believe of our general fund budget at this point and then right behind that um, equally important um, our public our fire service and um, and related to that our emergency services um, including the 911 center, which um, we make a substantial, the city of Santa Cruz makes a substantial contribution to operate. And then, of course, we have miles and miles of streets um, throughout the community, and we're, it's our responsibility to maintain those streets. Uh, we have an um, ongoing program funded by um, one of our two Measure H ballot measures that the city mem uh, community members have approved over the last several years and we have an ongoing program to resurface streets um, and then there are not just resurfacing projects but specific um, improvements such as the one pictured here the new roundabout um, down in the beach area but we do you know all the different kinds of traffic improvements that people see of course we pick up all the refuse, whether it's recyclable or not. Um, and then this, what is recyclable, there's a whole uh, facility at, the, at our, uh, what we used to just refer to as the landfill, but now is in fact a recycling center as well as landfill. And it's a very comprehensive operation there. Um, and then we do operate a landfill for that, the materials that can't be recycled. We also have a, maintain a whole stormwater um, 
drainage system to um, minimize flooding um, during the rainy season. We maintain, uh, we keep clean streets and sidewalks as much as possible with limited resources. Um, we have a whole parking system, especially in the downtown area, but in other parts of the community as well. Uh, it's a very complex operation in terms of uh, maintaining parking lots, building parking lots, and doing enforcement. We treat all the wastewater, not only for all the city residents, but probably more than half the residents of Santa Cruz County at our wastewater treatment facility. Um, and then we not only, and then we have all the pipes all over town that uh, collect that material. And we have certain very targeted flood control projects we maintain, especially in the area of the San Lorenzo River. And then we have a traffic engineering uh, a department that just designs our streets um, when we make change, you know improvements to streets just to make sure they function at the highest level possible. We maintain lights, uh, traffic signals and signs all over town, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of signs all over Santa Cruz. Um, and then we have this uh, really stellar um, city park system uh, you know, that just, it, it includes, um, you know, big and small parks all over town, recreation facilities, you know, some of the big ones that people know, San Lorenzo Park and De La Viega, Harvey West Park. Um, and then we have smaller, you know, neighborhood parks like Garfield Park. And then we have our Greenbelt lands, um, easily most well known, I think, is the Poganip, but we, but we have Arana Gulch on the other side of town as well. And then we operate a civic auditorium, which is a real community center. The city owns the municipal wharf, and that's a complex operation into it, uh, unto itself with all the businesses that are located out on the wharf and all the maintenance that's required to, so that, that those pilings don't collapse during a storm. And we operate the De La Viega Golf Course. And we have a whole range of city recreation programs, sports leagues, and classes um, with you know, activities for especially focused on youth and seniors. And then, of course, we also run a water department. And last but not least, <laughs> the city council itself, we, we don't use much of the budget. In fact, we're so cheap that we, we didn't, weren't able to, this is last year's picture of the city council because we couldn't afford to take a new picture this year yet. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a little more of parking, you know, new parking program we have that we really think has helped uh, make parking more convenient downtown. And then we have just all kinds of pretty much invisible to the community services that just make the city operate. You know, the city does get sued from time to time. We enter into a lot of contracts, so we have to have a good city attorney. We have 770 employees, so we have the, um, you know, a human resources department to hire and work with our staff, an IT department because we have a lot of technology and computers and phones that need to be served, um, to serve those, that staff. We may, we are required to maintain excellent public records for everything we do, and we have a finance department that has to manage and keep an eye on that 160, or I think now this coming year more like 175 million dollar budget. And another piece we have, of course, that many people are aware of is, is um, planning, and uh, we have we're just in the process of adopting a new general plan, uh, but there's many other functions in our planning department just of uh, giving building permits and inspecting buildings and uh, uh, just looking, you know, looking after the physical development of our community and, and making sure that it's the community, physically the community we want it to be. Uh, as I think I touched on this a little before, but um, we, we uh, maintain a very complex uh, water system that Goes all the way, um, goes to you know to 41st Avenue, and uh, it's uh, we serve 90,000 customers, and we have uh, you know incredible array of treatment facilities, storage facilities, um, laboratories that test the water to make sure that it's health, you know it's healthy for and safe for all of us. It's a very complex, big operation. 
and they're including our reservoir at Loch Lomond. We also maintain the city's bike system, bike paths all over town. Um, a, a, what a piece of the budget that has been diminishing a fair amount lately, but is still important to the community is our community programs funding that uh, funds a variety of nonprofit organizations that pro provide important community services. We contribute to the financing of the public library and we uh, we also administer it. We, even though it's not a strictly a city f function, it's countywide or almost countywide. Um, the staff of the library is are essentially employees of the city of Santa Cruz. Even even those who are working in other parts of the community or the county. We have an economic development department that has been doing tremendous work under very difficult circumstances lately, um, and they you know help us recruit and main, and uh, sustain. Uh, businesses and a healthy local economy. They've done some great work on uh, incubating small businesses, uh, bringing the Marine Sanctuary Explor Exploration Center to our community, doing a public art program. Th within that department, there's um, a housing, some housing assistance for, for affordable housing for our residents. So with that, we're going to go back. Martina is, I think. I think I covered this and then we'll jump to Martina. Okay, so back to you, Mark. The roving round table of, of presentations. So uh, again, Mark Pimentel, City's Finance Director. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit of a, a intro for, before Martine, or Martine Bernal, our City Manager, comes up and talks a little bit more about uh, where we're going. Um, so I'll start with just kind of a, a recap. I'm, I'm kind of the historian, so my stuff's old, old boring stuff, and, and Martine will get to talk about the great new exciting stuff of where we're going. Um, what this chart is tracking are our general fund expenditures. Again, our general fund, our uh, police, public safety, parks and recreation, community development, building, uh, public works, roads. Uh, you get the picture. Um, 2008, the, the economy is, is, is not doing well. Um, but as you saw in some of our earlier slides, our revenue trends were still holding pace. We knew they, we knew they weren't sustainable. And so in 2008, the city started proactively looking for, okay, we gotta prepare for this wave that we see coming. We, we see the economy where it's at right now. Although our revenues, we think, are gonna last out for another 12 to 18 months, uh, we can't wait for that time to come. Um, so in 2009, they started curtailing uh, some operations. Although there is some growth, it, it was not the growth that it would have been otherwise. And then you saw the major, major drop off in our expenditures in 2010. Um, in 2011, we had a, you know, a, a marginal growth as we had uh, ability to fund, fund back safety programs. Uh, federal grants came into the city of Santa Cruz as they did into many other municipalities for both road projects, uh, public projects, and to fund public safety, uh, specifically police and fire. We received about a million dollars in, in grants to fund those positions. So you see some recovery, although it's 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 grant funded um, recovery in those in uh, from 2010 to 2011, 11 to 12 status quo budget, 12 to 13 essentially a, a status quo budget with a little bit of of growth um, in some of our operations and again notably in our public safety areas. Um, what I want to focus on is a comparison 2004 kind of pre pre cuts and where we are at now. So I'll have two pie charts that demonstrate that. This first chart is our 2004 allocation. And I pay particular attention to parks and recreation and police. So in 2004, the city of Santa Cruz parks and recreation was nearly 20%, about a fifth of the general fund budget, 18.6%. Police was 38.2%. Uh, combined police and fire uh, were just, just slightly under 60%, about 58% police and fire. I will roll the clock forward to 2012 and you see a change. You see police going up to 40% and parks going from nearly a fifth to down to about 10% of the city's budget from uh, almost 19% down to 12%. Um, parks and Recreation was one of those programs that uh, was really squeezed and we were forced to make cuts in that area. Um, strategic cuts as best as possible to leave our core facilities intact. Uh, but you, you, out of that shift you saw our police and fire um, kind of solidify up and, and they're 
combined, we went from just under 60% to nearly 65% of our operations are now police and fire. So that's really the, the growth that I wanted to point out there. Our, our, our other services kind of stayed status quo with marginal changes, um, but really the, the hit came into our, our Parks and Recreation Department. Um, we'll review a little bit in these next several segments about what the state has done, and, I, and I, this is not a woe is us story, but it is just really demonstrating what changes have happened over the, the climate in the last 30 years to, that affects local municipalities and our ability. And what you'll see is the overriding theme is the shift of uh, state responsibility and, and control, pushing that down to a local level, um, leaving resources intact at the state level, and taking the local resources away from the local level. Um, and there are political reasons that we can get into on another discussion, certainly. Um, we'll talk about the economic downturns, uh, some of the changes that have happened in the economy, uh, both on, a lot of them on the personnel side. Of course, we're not a manufacturing entity. We're a service provider, and so predominantly our costs are personnel costs. And so when you have changes in health care and you have changes in pension systems, um, for whatever reason drove those costs, uh, those impact us and impact us hard. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, 1978, roll back the clock a little bit for some of us. Uh, Proposition 13 came into play and really changed the landscape of how local municipality services were funded. It put a cap on what local cities could levy in property taxes uh, to a 2% growth rate that's now controlled at the county level and based on, on market values. Um, that changed the landscape of, of how municipalities were funded. Uh, between there and 2012, March, May 31st today, there's, there's a lot that's happened. Uh, you can go almost every every so many years. Um, the 80s were, were kind of a quiet period. There was a little stuff going on, but nothing significant in changing the landscape. Uh, 1992 was the first major ch change since 78. Um, ERAF 1 is what some of us have been known to call it. Uh, Education Revenue Augmentation Fund, all that means is shifting local dollars to back to two, two schools to keep schools funded, which reduces the state's contribution to fund the schools. So local, local money shifted it up to the state so the state can maintain schools at a, at a level um, that they needed. Uh, nothing wrong with the intent of that, but it, it, again, another change in the landscape of how municipalities were funded. Um, and I'll, and I'll, I think I'll talk to that on the next slide. Um, sales tax, property tax shifts, those all started occurring in, in 92 up, in, up until February 1st of 2012. Uh, redevelopment revenue shifts. That was particular February 1st of 2012. Um, and then there's been some response and by the state voters to say, you know, this has been too much, too, too many years, three decades of taking local resources out of control, given to the state where we have less control and say over the use of those resources. So 2004 was a change in the tide that helped at least solidify and, and slow down the, the, I call it the raids, but the, the revenue shifts. Um, Actually, I, I did jump too quickly. So if, if I could just summarize, 1978, Prop 78, changing the landscape of property tax values. 1992, the first of the ERAF shifts, taking local money to backfill for schools. Uh, 1999, elimination of the car tax, which is a local revenue source by the state that then was ultimately backfilled by the state to keep the local money intact. Um, 2004, rolling forward, many, many mechanisms, and the greatest name of all time, the triple flip. And, and I, that could be a whole other session in and of itself of the state maneuvering different revenue sources and our own city revenue sources so they can issue bonds, bonded debt, and for collateralization purposes. But it shifted around property tax and sales tax, and sales tax became property tax. VLF became property tax, and property tax, I'm not sure what that became. Um, 2005-06, ERAF number three came into place. Again, another, sh another hit on local municipalities to fund the state so they can backfill for a school. Uh, keep the schools funded. Uh, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, sequential hits, major hits to our redevelopment, economic development opportunities. Um, there were one-time payments at different levels throughout each of those years, resulting in, in last year's 2011's budget that eliminated redevelopment agencies that went into effect this calendar year, February 1st of 2012. Our redevelopment agency, the source of our economic development funding, the source of our housing funding, are gone, and no replacement yet. Um, Certainly, the economy's also had a, had a major impact on us. Um, 
the Great Recession's impacts are still being felt, and they're going to be felt for a long time. Fortunately, I think this community has a very diverse revenue base that we've talked about. Property tax is a major payer. Also, transit occupancy tax, visitors, sales tax, um, utility users tax. There are some major revenue sources that feed in from different locations and different purposes. So it's helped to stabilize the operations. Um, We've seen investment rates and earnings that in 1995, uh, a conservative portfolio rate of 5%, 4%, that was the target. That's what you shot for in the, in the mid-90s. And now you're hoping for 0.75%. That's your new target. Uh, so that's really changed the landscape of you know, our investment portfolio that used to spin off um, additional resources that we can use general fund purposes. Uh, we're still leveraging that as best as we can, but now we're trying to get margins from 0.72 to 0.75 and maybe to 0.9. Um, so th that, that's certainly an impact of the Great Recession that's being felt um, in the city of Santa Cruz. And certainly uh, health employment costs, health rates, health insurance rates, and public safety uh, and pension system rates have been going up year to year. Uh, the state is continually tinkering with the formulas that ultimately result in higher costs for municipalities like the city of Santa Cruz. There will be some new rates coming on board in, in 2013. Um, and I think I, as I'll often do, click ahead, jump ahead. So I cover PERS retirement, I covered health care costs. And with that, I'll, I'll turn the floor over to Martine to talk about where we're going and, and what we're doing about this. Thanks, Mark. Um, before I do that, I just thought I'd touch on a little bit about uh, economic development and the impact uh, to the city. Um, because as Mark mentioned, it was this year that uh, redevelopment agencies were eliminated. Uh, and the major impact there is that uh, a revenue source of approximately $6 million a year that was spent on economic development purposes is essentially gone. So that the city now will not have that level of funding to invest uh, in this particular purpose. Not, and it's not just economic development, but it's also housing. 25% uh, of that was set aside for affordable housing. So it has long-term implications in terms of the uh, ability to build and support affordable housing long-term in the city of Santa Cruz, as well as uh, being able to invest in economic development activities. In Santa Cruz, we've used that money to really leverage uh, projects and programs. For example, the Tannery Art Center. Much of the money that came there was not necessarily economic development money uh, or redevelopment money. Some of it was, but the vast majority of it was used to leverage state and federal grants to build that facility. Same with the, the Sanctuary Center that just opened. Uh, big, the vast majority of the budget for that came from leveraging funds, and because we had redevelopment funds to be able to invest to leverage those, it allows that facility to be built. It's how we rebuilt the downtown. It's how we're able to uh, try to uh, 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 keep uh, businesses uh, in town. It's how we're trying to how, how we try to attract businesses in town. So it's it's a, it's a really critical function that now we're trying to figure out how to maintain to the extent possible. Uh, and, and over the long run, it'll be a major loss for the city of Santa Cruz. Um, so I thought I'd just mention that. As Mark mentioned, you know, the history with respect to trying to balance our budget has, has really been a long one and certainly something we've been dealing with for uh, over 10 years. Uh, we had a small or respite there between, I guess, 06 and 07. But otherwise, beginning in 2001, we really have had a series of reductions. Uh, the most significant ones have really been in the last year and a half, I would say. But more often than not, in the last 12 years or so, we've had uh, reductions. And so we really have had 12 sets of budget reductions since 2001, as, as mentioned out here. We've reduced the number of employees uh, by over 100 positions. At one point, we had over 900 employees uh, in the city, and now we've got 770. So um, we've had to make considerable reductions. And most of those are in the... Uh, uh, general fund, uh, not in the enterprise funds. Uh, we've uh, had to ask employees for quite a few concessions, uh, particularly lately. When I became city manager about a year and a half ago, we were facing a budget deficit of about $8 million, which was pretty huge. And quite frankly, we had to do uh, a number of things to be able to address it. It wasn't something that we could do simply by cutting services. It, they would be an acceptable level of cuts in the service area. Uh, so we couldn't do it by just cutting services. We couldn't do it by just taxing. Uh, that would be tremendous tax increases in a recession. just was not doable. Um, so we couldn't do that alone. 
Um, so we had to do everything that we could. Uh, we had to ask employees for concessions. We had to uh, see if we can get voter approval for increases. We had to look at our operations and become more efficient, modify them, adjust them, shrink wherever we could. So it really was a multifaceted approach to try to achieve uh, fiscal stability moving forward. Um, with respect to employee concessions, we've made some really significant reductions. In the last set of concessions, what we did was ask all of our employee groups to essentially reduce their total compensation, which includes pay and benefits, by 10 percent. Um, and of that, 8 percent of it had to be structural, meaning that it was ongoing reductions in total compensation pay. In addition to that, we asked them to uh, implement a, a secondary uh, lower, lower cost retirement system. So all new employees now hired by the city uh, have a lower benefited level of uh, 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 retirement uh, program. And in addition, they contribute more to retirement programs. And in addition, they contribute more to their health care. So uh, uh, you know, we've, we simply have had, had to ask our employees to help us in trying to address the structural problem moving forward. And they have. They stepped up. All of our bargaining units, police, fire, all of them came to the table and were able to negotiate that level of, of support from them. That saved us about $5 million. So that's how we addressed eight mil uh, out of the $8 million, $5 million of it came from concessions, which is significant. Um, we had some, we've had some tax increases over the years uh, to uh, also get us through in the form of sales taxes, in the form of utility user tax more recently, again, to support uh, public safety in particular. Um, and uh, 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 We've also looked at uh, uh, a variety of other revenue sources to uh, supplement uh, the city's budget. Um, so the other thing that's important to recognize that even though we faced and you mostly when you, you know, when you read the paper and when you hear all the, uh, over time, all the news, you tend to, to see all to hear in uh, all the all the bad news, all the the deficits the, year after year after year after year, and that gives you, I think, can easily give you the impression that the city uh, is really maybe not well managed or fiscally uh, is is not sound. But despite uh, all the, the the fiscal deficits uh, and things that we've had to do, the city's always has had uh, sound fiscal policies, and we've always have been in, in, in good shape in that respect. And I have to attribute that to just really having a city council that uh, really makes that a priority. And so we've never uh, have allowed ourselves to get in a position where uh, we are on the verge of bankruptcy or on the verge of not being able to make payments or pay, make payroll or borrow money just simply to be able to uh, make payroll and that sort of thing. A lot of agencies get to that level. We've never have, have done that. The council has always been proactive about uh, doing that. Uh, a lot of people uh, are surprised by that uh, because they tend to think that Santa Cruz is a liberal city and therefore sort of spend thrifty <laughs> or spend thrift. Um, but uh, in fact, uh, we have uh, one of the highest bond ratings of uh, many cities. And I was talking to some consultants uh, a couple of years ago who were uh, had worked with some cities in Southern California in terms of issuing bonds. We should issue, We had just issued bonds, and so they asked me, uh, uh, "What kind of bond rating did you get, and what kind of interest rate did you get?" And that's important because the better your bond rating, the better the interest rate is, and the better, uh, the, you know, the more you save in terms of paying off that debt. And I told them we had a double A uh, bond rating, and they were they, they were they were just floored. They're like, "We just came back from you know conservative Southern California, and they've got you know double B." Triple C bond ratings over there, and so I think we've been, uh, we've always balanced our budgets. We've uh, never spent more than what we had. Uh, it, sometimes we do uh, predict deficits, and I'll explain later on in terms of uh, our, even our current budget. But we always have sufficient reserves to cover that if necessary, um, and uh, we always have sufficient res reserves to make sure that we can pay all our bills, that we don't have to borrow, um, and that we again maintain our, uh, our all of our. Uh, ratings and our accounting practices are all sound. Um, I've kind of touched this uh, on this already, but you know, again, we've really taken a strategic approach to balancing our budget uh, and a proactive approach moving ahead. Uh, it's balanced, looking at all the options. Um, and at the same time, we've really had, have had to look closely at what our goals and priorities are when we make these decisions. And of course, they really are set by the city council. Um, and, and, and as we look at all of the different options, those, those things have to be taken into account. What are the, the community's goals, priorities, and values? Um, 
because of that, uh, the council uh, more recently adopted a set of uh, strategic goals uh, with uh, a number of, of objectives within those goals. Uh, and these are up here, um, and I think they're important to note. Uh, one, of course, is to enhance community safety. Uh, Santa Cruz is, a, is not your typical suburban city. We're more of a central uh, cosmopolitan city, and so we tend to have many of the big city issues uh, uh, that cities of our size don't t tend to have. And so public safety is an issue that we have to deal with all the time, as, as anyone who lives here is aware of that. Uh, and it's important, uh, and so we have definitely have made that a priority. Um, attracting and maintaining businesses and jobs also, again, is important for quality of life, for people to be able to pay here, uh, to, to, I'm sorry, to work here and, and live here to the extent possible, and also to preserve our tax base and to increase our tax base. I uh, mentioned fiscal stability. Um, again, that's been the practices of having a, a good fund balance. You know, council has never wanted to draw down or, and spend all of our reserves. Uh, they've always have kept them at, at minimum levels or better. Um, and so having good fiscal policies is very important and is, and is a goal that the council has adopted specifically. Uh, protecting the environment, of course, is a value that Santa Cruz has had for a long, long time. And so we have a number of uh, objectives with respect to environmental sustainability. Um, including um, you know, adopting a climate action plan to uh, reduce emissions and so on and so forth. So there's a whole host of objectives in that area. Um, and then we have a large infrastructure and facilities, as uh, the mayor sh uh, showed you earlier, that we have to preserve and protect and maintain. Um, we, we've done some deferred maintenance, certainly, in the last few years as the budgets have, have shrunk. Um, but we do need to invest uh, in many, many facilities. Uh, some of them are very old, particularly the water system, for example. It's been around. We've got pipes from the you know, 1800s and that sort of thing. So uh, we have to continually have to maintain. We particularly invested in, um, um, I think as the mayor mentioned earlier, also in roads with the passage of the 2006 Measure H for roads. We're doing a lot of that. We've been replacing a lot of street, you probably have noticed a lot of street lights, you know, LED street lights and so on and so forth. Um, again, just to kind of cover the strategies here, on, on the revenue side of things, uh, um, we've tried to reduce to the extent possible subsidies that the general fund provides to other funds. Uh, uh, at times, uh, the general fund has covered expenses in other funds, and um, uh, we need to make sure, you know, we've we made sure that that doesn't occur. The general fund provides administrative services, for example, to the enterprise funds. We don't need to have two finance departments, one for the, one for the water department and one for the general fund department. And by having one, obviously it's more efficient for both operations, for both funds, but we can't have the general fund subsidize the water fund, so we make sure we don't do that. We leverage grant opportunities, I've mentioned that. Uh, there's been a particular focus on economic development uh, activities in the city. Uh, the council's approved quite a number of hotels, new hotels in the last few years. Some have come online, some we expect and hope to come online uh, in the near future. That'll help uh, our long-term long fiscal stability. Um, and I mentioned the utility user tax. On the expenditure side, um, again, we've really tried to be as efficient as possible through using technology. Uh, you know, we do a lot, a lot uh, more with technology now. Uh, in one area in particular, for example, is uh, the uh, electronic records. Uh, and, and, and we used to have a lot of document clerks to file documents and to track them. And that's really, technology has allowed us to, to really reduce paper. Now we have paperless agendas and so on and so forth. Uh, and there are other areas where technology has allowed us to not necessarily uh, shrink, but allow us not to need to grow as much. You know, we don't, for example, need as many garbage trucks because we have automated trucks now. We used to have more routes and more trucks uh, that are needed to collect uh, garbage and recycling. Um, we've had, you know, we definitely have had to make some service level reductions um, and uh, uh, delay uh, replacement of equipment and. You know, our computers aren't replaced as often as they used to be. Our, our vehicles aren't replaced as much. Uh, we've delayed infrastructure improvements. And then I've already kind of covered the employee compensation reductions. Um, so just really briefly, I think I'm supposed to cover this. Yes, um, to discuss the budget process and uh, uh, give you a little uh, update on um, the uh, next year's budget. Uh, essentially, the budget process starts with the uh, city manager. Um, essentially putting, and the departments preparing a proposed or recommended budget for the city council. Um, and we really start that process uh, at, at the beginning of the year. 
uh, when we start looking at uh, our revenues, our expenditures, our trends, uh, all the various factors that might affect the budget, and departments start putting together um, all the data, and then it really it's the finance department who takes the leads in putting it together and the finance director. Um, and then we come up with what the next year looks like. We also do a five-year forecast, so we update and look ahead at what the future might bring. Uh, and then we develop a proposed budget that uh, is really a, a preliminary or draft budget for the council to consider. This is uh, per the requirements of the city's charter. Uh, there, that's a requirement that the city manager is, is, is one of the core responsibilities of the city manager. Um, in that uh, proposed budget includes a capital budget, which is also prepared uh, in advance, and, and that actually is considered by the council separately and earlier than the main budget, but it's incorporated into the proposed budget. Um, and that includes, uh, oh, the, the one thing I wanted to note that one of the things we've had to do over the years with respect to the capital budget uh, to get us through is we used to dedicate a lot more of our hotel tax, the TOT here, uh, to capital projects. At one point, we used to dedicate two-thirds of the total TOT to capital programs. And over the years, as we've had to maintain operations, that number has really reduced uh, considerably. So we don't invest as much in capital as we used to. We'll need to do that, but we've had to make those changes in order to get through and just be able to provide our core you know, day to day services. Now, we are looking at uh, you know, an improving situation overall. Um, our uh, we have a pretty healthy fund balance. Uh, our reserves are in, in pretty good shape. We expect to end this fiscal year with actually a surplus, a small surplus, which is really, really great because we, when we adopted this year's budget, we had expected about a $2.5 million uh, deficit, and we're going to end the year actually with a surplus. Oh, the question was what was the, the, the dollar amount of the surplus? Uh, it's about $1.2 million is what we're projecting. We'll end the, this fiscal year, which is about 2% of, of our budget. Um, I was reminded that um, in addition to attending council meetings, um, uh, people can always watch on community television all, all of our council sessions, and we encourage emails, um, citycouncil at cityofsantacruz.com. And one other thing that I should note, um, that same address, city, cityofsantacruz.com, that is our web, web address, and that is where all the budget documents can be found, and we encourage anyone who'd like to delve deeper into the budget issues that there are many exciting pages to see there on our website of city budget items.